All right, all right. Record button, allowed recording. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good midnight. <laughs> Some of you guys. <laughs> Simon, it's midnight for you. Thank you uh -huh. for joining us at this time of the night. All right, who have we got here? Yeah, hey, I was just going to call him, actually. House. It was on my list to do that. To do, to do. Who? who um, who? yeah. I'm just going to mute some people as they come in. And there we go. Awesome. Guys, welcome. Welcome. I am so excited about today. We have my friend, Simon Servino. Hey, Stacy's in the house. How are you doing, Stacy? <laughs> well, we haven't blown away yet. We're improve, home now. Improve, We're empowering empower her. her. All right. Man, yeah, we this... got the hurricane heading into, uh, into Florida. So all of your prayers, please, to all those in the Tampa area and throughout the state of Florida. Yeah, um, so that's coming in here within the next couple of hours. So <laughs> we thank you for paying attention to that. Yeah, Jesus. I mean, you we... know you're in Australia, but there's still water in Australia. You know what it's like. Oh, hey, we had Ooh. we had a eight minute shower here in uh, February and it right. literally took out 500,000 homes in eight minutes. And my oh my, my garage literally had a river running through it. Like, oh my I'm just going, what the, because we're like on a slope and yeah. all this water and they've just fixed it. Um, you know, how many months later is it? It's insane. So the damage that's happening over there. Um, I've just my Facebook's been filled with people. Um, it's devastating. Yeah. It's, it's it's heartbreaking and and to see the people of Tampa too. Yeah. Um, it's one thing to see somebody that's really tired. We all know what tired is like. I don't know one person. I don't know one person that goes. You know what? I have had enough sleep. I am just so like ha. Huh, you know, fresh. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know anybody like that. But to see somebody tired and without hope. That's a completely other thing. And so we just ask for your prayers. We thank you so much. Thank you, John. For sure, Stacey. Thank you for letting me. Uh, uh, no, it's all good. We, we need to let people know. And my Facebook feed has been filled with my friends who are just saying, like their house has literally got washed out. And there's yeah. they, they've come back and there's nothing. Anyway, so guys, yeah. um, prayers with Stacy and with Florida. So thank yeah. you, everybody, for being here. We're very, very, very excited. Warren's in the house. Leo's in the house. Dee's in the house. Uh, I am going to share, share my screen. There we go. LP, what's up? All right, Mr. Simon. Dude, I am so excited to introduce you. Guys, Simon and uh, we've been friends for how many years now, Simon? It's been a while. It has been a while. I can't even remember. But today, Simon. Is it eight years? Yeah, yeah. Simon's going to teach you the eight steps to repeatable. Yes, you're number. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One, two, let me meet you, Millie. Thank you. All right. I should have put the mute on entry. Guys, I want to give you a quick little introduction to Simon. Simon has created more than $2 billion in additional sales for his clients over the last 21 years. He's an advisor who became a CEO. He then had to learn the importance of working on the business more than in it. He now shares his proven templates with high-ticket entrepreneurs, just like you guys, and allows you to reclaim 14 hours per week using his strategy sprints methodology. By the way, this book is absolutely amazing. If you don't have it, you know, grab it by the end of this talk. Um, he is the author of strategy sprints. Uh, he's got a, his own podcast. It's in the top 2.5% TEDx speaker, Forbes contributor, triathlete. He's prepared over 1300 podcasts. Now, by the way, we met because check this out guys for a cold outreach. I was on a podcast and I tell this story to everybody. This was the easiest and coolest close I've ever experienced. Simon messages me and he goes, Hey, Johan, I heard you on this guy's podcast. I think you're absolutely amazing. Wow. What a great story. Do you have three minutes for me to share something with you? I'm like, all right, cool. Sure. Let's go. And then I jump on, jump on zoom. And he's like, Hey, I know you're busy. Three minutes. Let me show you something. Is it okay if I share an Excel sheet? I'm like, yeah, sure. Go for it. He shares his Excel sheet. He's like, hey, I've got this little private community. And here's this person. He's a best-selling author. Here's a YouTube guy who's got more than 200 million subscribers, blah, blah, blah. By the time he got to number five, I was like, I don't know what this guy's selling, but I'm in. And then Simon's got his own membership. And I was like, dude, let's go. Now, that was many, many, many years ago. Since then, Simon and I have become friends with more than it's become more than just a transactional relationship. So Simon, I really appreciate you, appreciate what you do. Thank you for being awake at midnight to come and present to our people. And I'm gonna hand the reins over to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Johan. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, you know, I'm always excited when Johan asks for anything. And so I'm here. I'm ready. It's party time. Let's go. Yeah. This is this is for me the chance to share with you repeatable sales in eight steps for agency owners that are selling 10K, 20K, 30K, 50K, 100K, 200K items. And if you are one of those, take notes because the next 50 minutes, they can change your sales by 25%, by 50%, by 75%, depending on how much you execute of this. But this is not theory. This comes from the field, from, from the praxis and everything that I will share with you guys, you can directly implement. And um, it's just eight steps. So you can do it really fast. Um, let's start. Hey, Simon, I've got people messaging me going, Simon's got such a cool accent. Where's he from? Guys, I've got to tell you. So Simon, are you, yeah. in, you in Vienna right I'm now? I'm an Italian, an Italian in Vienna, Austria. <laughs> there you go. Awesome, man. Yeah. Have you ever had the situation where you have a sales call? It's about $20,000 deal in Australian dollars. And you are so excited because it's going so well. You are winning this. You, you end the conversation. You go to the kitchen. You tell your spouse, put the champagne in the fridge. I'm just closing a big deal. Okay, 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 I'll do it. And then you, you get back to work and they ghost you. And you go, it's impossible, right? Everything was perfect. We got along so well. How can I be ghosted? I am sharing screen, if you look here. Hey, hey, Leo. So did you ever experience that? Just tell me in the chat, yes or no. I'm sure everybody's experienced that. <laughs> and the reason for that is, and this is what I do for a living, you need eight steps in that high ticket sales conversations. And most people know about the steps, but they skip one. And I will show you exactly. You skip one, you lose the deal. This is why those eight, yes, we have to practice them, but also they need to be in the right order. If we if we do one thing at the wrong time or try to cut corners, we will lose the deal and we will be very surprised. So I do this thing since 22 years every day um, and the win rate goes up by 25% as soon as we start implementing these things. So it might be for you already tomorrow. What is your current win rate? So if you have 10 calls, how many do you close? Let me know in the chat, what is your current win rate? And if you don't know it, say, I don't know. And if you don't know it, we're gonna assume it's one out of 10. Come on guys, 15%. I, I, I know we got some closes on here. 15% and many have to think that long. That's not it's a good sign. Nice. So 15%, 35%. All right, guys, we got work to do. We got work to do. What makes the best NBA player versus the mediocre NBA players? Who knows it? Training. Training? No. They all train. They all train a lot. Practice like you play. They all practice. Everybody practices a lot. Work ethic. They all practice hard, hard, hard. But what makes the best? Mindset? Okay. Okay. And, and how does it look like in behavior? What's the difference? Strong mindset in an NBA player. Learning from failures. Now we are on to something. Stacy, congrats. They are forced to watch their tape after every game. So they learn from their failures. They learn from every single step, literally step. And they learn from 
also from what's winning, from what's working well. The point is they are forced to watch their tape. This is how they get from being 99% uh, winning to 99.1% winning. And that makes the difference in, in that league. So they're forced to watch their tape. Now, um, doesn't matter in which field you play, if it's tennis or soccer or rugby or, or basket, if you do an activity, so you're, you're sending the ball to the other side and then your coach comes in in the break and says, all right, now try this. All right, now try this. All right, now try that, but a little bit more intense. Now try not to do this. And then you go and do it again. You see the power of these small iterations and being forced to have this reality check and have an immediate feedback and say, okay, try a little bit more left, try a little bit less spin. And then you do it again. That's the difference. This is what makes exactly. It's not repeating what, what went wrong. Uh, it's learning from your patterns. It's doing the basics right. Yes, they practice the fundamentals, the basics, like leg work. Of course, they know how to stand, but they practice leg work. Why? Because 1% better, that's the game. If you can be 1% better every week, you will be so much better at the end of the year. So guys, who is reviewing your sales calls? Is it Johan? Is it a friend of yours? Who is reviewing your sales calls? Let me know. It's, it's my wife. My wife's reviewing my sales calls. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But um, what we are going to discuss is that Yes, you need a framework. And if you have a wife that has a great sales framework, then you're good. But then it's not just the framework. Um, and I, I will give you my framework, the eight steps, but it's also expert feedback on that framework. It's not enough to know what to do. We know, okay, I should move my legs. But it's very different if in the heat of the situation you record it and then somebody says, look at that leg and you go, oh shit, it's true. Should be two centimeters more on the right. It's very different, right? It hits different if we are in action and then we have somebody in our corner that says, hey, try this right now. And so we need a framework. We need expert feedback. And if we skip one of those eight steps, we lose the deal. Uh, I've seen this with some of these logos here. Those are some of our clients. And I've seen this over and over again. We practice these fundamentals with them. Now you might say, well, Google, Mercedes, uh, Deutsche Bahn, Mgen, they know how to close deals. Yes, they do. But that's exactly the same uh, with the athletes. They know how to stand on their legs. The difference is, who is practicing the fundamentals in, in an intense way with an expert on the other side that's with them in the arena. And so I've seen hundreds of times when people just skip one step, they lose the deal. So I will offer here something that I usually don't do anymore uh, because it's one-on-one -on -one and uh, I, I have bigger, bigger tasks now that I'm the CEO of the company. But... Uh, for Johan, I'm doing this because we have this long-standing relationship. And so uh, I will offer at the end of this one-on-one -on -one time with me 60 minutes where I review your tape and I give you uh, personally a, a review in 60 minutes. And that can easily change the win rate uh, from your calls from 15% to above 40%, from 35% easily above 55%. Uh, so, but I will do this in the end. Now, what is your percentage of talking time? So if you, um, and by the way, because there, there aren't that many slots, let me put it right now here in the chat so that uh, the faster, the faster, the more secure your spot. Um, do you know your talking time in percentage? So 
you have a 50 minutes call, which is a demo call probably. Yeah, you have an initial call and a demo call. One of those, how much percent are you talking? 30%, David. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we, we, we Who tell, else knows their percentage? We tell all our salespeople it, they should be talking at about 30% because 70% of the time the other person should be talking, you should be doing fact-finding, understanding, and then giving them the advice. 70, 30, 60 to 70. Robert, that's your talking time or the buyer's talking time? Warren, 70, 30. Okay, so... I hope that the buyer is talking 70% of the time, you're talking 30%. That's really good and perfect, perfect. You want to stay below 30 and okay. that's, that's the highest yeah. win rate. And you don't need a script. You just need to be below 30%. Now you go, oh, below 30%, but no script. My coach tells me I need a script. You don't need it. Um, 30, 90, lots of talking. You don't need a script. That's the good news. Stay natural, stay present. But your talk time needs to be below 30%. Congrats, Johan. I'm, I'm glad we are on the same page. If you are around 27, 28, 29%, that's the sweet spot. And you can do that. How can you do that? And this is where the expert coach comes in because for each step, you need one or two strong questions. And this is what uh, I would do with you in that one hour is to make your questions stronger. So I would watch the tape, see the questions that you ask and help you have stronger questions. That's what an expert does. If you have powerful questions, now you can ask one question and then let them drive the conversation. Because if they drive, they buy. If you drive, they don't buy. Now, let's go there. I will share with you the eight steps. You can download them right now. It's at strategiesprints.com slash tools. And you have them in, you can put them uh, as a wallpaper on your computer, or you print them, or you just uh, have them with you. I have them literally in front of me right now as a poster, and in the back, this yellow thing, the yellow thing, those are the eight steps. So I'm always watching this, even if I know them, because I wrote them, so I should know them, right? Yes, I know them, but in the call, I'm not thinking about the process. I'm I'm present, I'm, I'm with the buyer. Those are just milestones, it's not a script. Those are just milestones, and I only have to make sure that I'm not skipping them, but I am present with the buyer. That makes a difference. So uh, in order for you to have your sales calls reviewed, you have to record them, right? How are you recording your sales calls right now? Zoom, pretty cool. Fathom, even better because Fathom has this little alarm that tells you, hey, you are in a monologue. I like that um, because you will do less monologues by doing that. We use a software, we have partnered with a team called Attention and we have our eight steps in there. So the software is telling me in real time if I'm skipping something, but I don't think it's needed. You can practice it and, and, and you can use it on your own. The worst thing is we don't record them, then nobody can help us. So are you ready for the eight steps, guys? Woohoo, let's go. Let's go. Uh, grab them, strategiesprints.com slash tools. So you have them in front of you. And now let's dive deep into them. Step one is visualize. And this is what 99% of you guys don't do. What is visualize? Uh, visualize is literally, um, writing down their exact words as they say them. And why do we need their words?
because there is only one fundamental need in every human being, and that is being seen, being heard, and being understood. This is the only job in the first five minutes of your sales call. And this is why Johan said, I, I don't even know what was on that Excel, but I was in. Because it's not about the content. Do you feel seen? Do you feel heard? Do you feel understood? I had there a, are several uh, downloads. Which one is it? The repeatable sales one, the yellow, the yellow pyramid. So Simon, I had a I had a call with a guy, and he is a elite SaaS coach. And he went through his first step was he's like, okay, cool, let's talk, Johan. And he pulled out his drawing pad and he started asking me these powerful questions. And by the time we were done, he had literally drawn out this amazing map. And it was a brainstorming session, right? By the end of it, I was like, man, that that map that we've created together is worth so much money and so it was it was easy because one it was all my words it was my goals my what i wanted to achieve in a form that i had not seen before and it just made the sale much more easier so yes this visual writing is awesome you see the difference guys and this is what 99 percent of people are not doing before before we coach them so and after that you do it and you will see now what happens in step three, four, and five. Before doing this, you would get less information in the exploratory uh, step three, four, five. But if you do this in the first five minutes, now you are creating a safe space where people, uh, you know, want to be seen and heard and understood. If we don't do this, we are just another person who wants to sell you something. Nobody needs that, nobody wants that, and nobody feels safe in that situation. So sales is really about risk and risk minimization for the buyer. Make it safe and make it easy for them to buy. This is sales. And in the higher the ticket, the higher the risk. So the more risk is in the room, risk of reputation, risk of losing money, risk of taking the wrong decision, risk of losing time. All these risks are in the room. So first five minutes, step one is visualize. You can use a Google Doc. You can use Apple Notes. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm using Epic Pen to go directly and because I don't want to switch. I want this to be in that second when I need it. And But it's really important that you visualize and we will need them later on in the next step. So let's jump to the next step. Uh, this is the thing that you download, and those are the eight steps. So after we did one, visualize, now we can move on to number two, frustration. So, Jim, and if we don't do one, they will not tell us their frustration in the first place. So yeah. you will get a shallow uh, cognitive information. So, hey, I'm here, uh, I need a new website. Oh yeah, why do you need a new website? Because uh, everybody has a website. If you stay that shallow, nothing's going to happen, right? Uh, they just move to the next one and, and go with the cheapest website. Um, that's why step one, visualize is so important because otherwise in step two, they will not tell us what's really going on. So we do step one right, and I will show it to you in the one-on-one -on -one session how to do that exactly. Now we get to frustration. Frustration means asking what is tiring them right now. What's frustrating? What's pissing you off? What are you tired of? And this is, it's not here. It's in the body. You don't move to step three before you are body to body. So what does that mean? It says, I'm tired of this. That's body. Uh, I feel guilty because I'm not a great role model for my kids. That's body. And if it's, oh, I should do lead gen because everybody does lead gen, that's in my head. But you see the difference? We don't move on before we have it in the body. And some examples of strong questions in step two are, what have you tried? And what else can you do? Have you given up already?
we move to step three when we are body to body. If we are not body to body, and at this stage, people who don't want to go deeper or don't trust us, they will ask for the price. And amateurs tell the price now. And you lose. The pro waits and says, I don't have an offer yet for you. I will tell you the price if and when I have an offer. We are not there yet. And then we continue question. The importance is about in the context of everything else that they have, why does this matter? If we do everything right and then we don't have the importance, step four will not work. Step four is the cost of inaction. If you do nothing, what happens? So I get coached too, in this case, by the AI that we built. And it's telling me, Simon, you're, you have visualized, but you don't have a frustration and you have moved on to deliverables. If I see it is, I see I'm losing $30,000. So I go back. You, you just got everybody's attention with, what, what AI is that? I want that now. <laughs> yeah, but don't, don't worry. Tech, tech, tech comes and goes. This is the this is the eternal truth of sales, the eight steps. Tech will come and go every week. Um, I'm happy to tell you the tech, but it changes every week. This is the evergreen. This will be true for your grandchildren, that if you don't have a frustration, you shouldn't move on. If they ask you for the price, you don't tell the price because you say, I don't have an offer for you now. We will find out if I have an offer for you after I have understood where you are, where you want to be, and what's blocking you in between. And if our offer is the right offer, then I will make you an offer. Or I might refer you to somebody who has the right offer. And, and they are usually okay with it. So we move on to the importance in the context of everything, of, of everything that they have on their plate, how important is this? And now, the cost of inaction. Do you guys know how to find out the cost of inaction? No? Okay. Somebody wants to play? Yes. We I can would. role play this. I, I would love that. Hey guys, how about we do this live with somebody who wants to who wants to role play? Leo, I see you there. Do you want to put your hand up and go through the exercise with Simon? I can see you trying to unmute. Go for I'm, it. Yeah, I'm game. Let's do it. Let's have fun. All right. That's perfect. Rough. Perfect, Leo. So pick one one of your uh, either either current or past sales conversations where um, you didn't close it, or one where you're right now in the middle of it, and and when you have one, just tell me the 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 industry. Um, doctors. Doctors, all right. They are doctors or they are selling to doctors? Uh, they're selling to doctors. They're selling to doctors. Okay. So um, let's give him a name. Pick a name for that person. Uh, Tony. Tony. All right. So I'm Leo and you are Tony. And I say, cool, Tony. Um, so what happens if you do nothing? So I, I'm, I'm the doctor, correct? Yeah. Okay. I'll, if I don't do nothing, I'll probably would not get any more uh, clients coming to the door. Less clients or no clients? Less clients. Okay. So what does it mean, less clients? How many less clients will you get next month? And I shouldn't call them clients. I should say patients. Uh, well, currently, we get an average of 20 to 30 clients. Uh, 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 patients per month. Uh, so not doing so, it will give, it will give me plateau at, at a rate of twenty patients per month. Without okay. growth, twenty to thirty patients per month. And in terms of money, what's the dollar amount of twenty to thirty patients per month? Roughly seven thousand dollars. Okay, and. 
when you say it would diminish, by how much would it diminish? Probably a ratio of 20% per month if I don't have any new recurring uh, clientele. Okay. So help me calculate 20% of 7K. How much would you have then per month? Uh, let me put my calculator. I'm mean, old-fashioned here. And to the other guys, I'm letting him do the calculation as if I couldn't calculate or had no calculator. So because that's, that's exactly what you want. You want the buyer to drive it, okay? It's his number, not mine. So that would deplete about $1,400 per month. $1,400 goes away per month. All right. Uh, how's that? What do you mean? Uh, was it, was it, was it the, the result you mean? Yeah, how does that feel? Doesn't feel good. I'm looking at the number that I didn't, I didn't play with before. So that will bring my revenue to about 5,600. 5,600. And so that's the money part. And now on the time part, what does it mean for you in terms of you and your team putting time into this? So if you do nothing, uh, what's the effort? Well, I would have to either hire someone to do more outreach. Uh, so it would cost me money to do some kind of outreach of marketing, reach out to more clients. So more one patients. person, half a person, two people? I would say one or two people. Okay. Uh, what's, what's that in dollars? Probably two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars a month per employee. Okay, so we're losing one thousand four hundred. We have to spend another two thousand. And in terms of uh, resources, in terms of uh, thing, unused material, unused current people, what what kind of resource situation would you have right now? We'll have one assistant, uh, so she'll be underused. Underused person. assistant, okay. So thank you, Leo, for playing. I think we can stop it now because you can see, guys, the cost of inaction, you start doing this triangle. You want them to give you the money number, the time number, and the resource number, if there is a number. So it's money on the opportunity side. It's money on the losing side. Time that they can either save or effort that gets added. Resources is either knowledge that you can use, reuse, or it's staff that, you, that is underutilized. And now when they say the number, don't calculate for them, okay? You have them calculate. Uh, even if they think that you're stupid, don't worry. That's not important. Important is that they are in a safe place and they are driving their own change. This is the most important thing in B2B sales. So after the call, now, you know, you have 45 minutes for the initial call. So at this point around the importance of and, and, and cost of inaction, around this, your time will be over. So you, you will ask them, okay, what's the best next step, right? And they go, oh, well, let's continue this conversation. Well, let's schedule a demo call. And so they will come now in the demo call because you will probably close in two calls. Most people close in two. And now they will come to the demo call and you have already this documentation, like Johan said, you, you have a map and it's their map. And they will feel like, Shit, he saved the map. And that's exactly my words. So you start call to, again, the first five minutes, they feel super safe. They feel seen. It's about them. And they are ready to move on. Now they will bring you the actual information. And you start with, okay, what, what happened since the last time? Anything new? They will tell you what happened in a very open way. And probably they will even tell you, you know, I thought about my budget for this. I talked to, to partners about you. And so they will evolve already. They will have thought about it.
and something happens. So you pick that up in the beginning. And then we move on. We continue from the cost of inaction to, to the next step. This is something where I need a little bit more time uh, with you guys, but you can download it from strategiesprints.com slash tools and play with it in between. This is how I prepare for every sales conversation. And this is one of my killer tools. You see this, these three tools out of the 274 tools in the Sprint University, these three are the killer tools. And this one is the strategic value. So is if somebody's buying, what are they actually buying? And in order to get there, you have to find out what is coming for them and how can you make sure that they will be ready for what's coming. So this is the difference between the expert and the amateur. The amateur is exploring, right? But the expert knows what's coming for them in the next 12 months, 18 months, 26. So if, if you're selling to doctors, you know what's going on in their field. You know if you know diabetes is getting more or less, which organs are affected, which technologies are relevant and, and will impact their workflows. You know a little bit about macroeconomics and how that affect or demographics. Because if you are an expert because you, you have this intimacy about their, their field. And so they will feel that in this stage and they will check it. And so this is where you... Where you, you don't only ask, but you ask with the with the intensity of an expert. This is where you ask and they go, ouch, how do you know that? <laughs> and they feel seen again and they feel also that you have the courage and the intensity to go where they wouldn't go on their own. So what's coming for you in 18 months? What's your plan? Are you ready for that? I can help you be ready. This is what you need to do to be ready. Oh shit, I, I knew it, but yeah, you are right. Hey Simon, the, um, the graphic on the screen, it looks very fuzzy, we can't read it. Can you just quickly read those out just so people have context? Sure, they can download the whole thing, strategiesprints.com slash tools. And basically you start outside, which asks you what, what their situation is. And then in the middle, what is coming for them in the next 12 months, 16 months, 18 months? And you end, it's like a labyrinth, you end in the middle. And that middle is, this is how I can help you be ready for what's coming for you. And so the middle is what you prepare before every sales call. Because you will need this. Also, if you're doing cold outreach, this is how you prepare before a cold outreach. Because this is the reason to talk. Hey, Johan, I'm reaching out to you because this is the reason to talk, the one thing in the middle. And that that makes the difference between, you know, an a an average cold call. Uh, hello, this is a cold call. You can hang up if you want. Cling. Or if somebody actually prepared. Hey Johan, I'm on your website right now. You are in software. This is what's coming for you. Do you have three minutes? It's different. It's still a good chance that he hangs up, but there is also a good chance that he says, okay, let me hear this. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm learning something here. Okay, you have 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Show me what you got. But at least we have a conversation, right? But how, from, from where do I get that confidence to say that? Well, from my preparation. So this is the strategic value. And without that, you shouldn't enter the sales conversation. And this is what you do in step four. And in the one-on-one, -on -one, I have more time and I will carve it out with you for your people. Uh, but for, for here, for this setting, I have to speed it up a little bit. And so we go to the deliverables. This is where most people really, really um, F it up because they say, hey, can you send me an offer? Yeah, sure, I'm sending you an offer. So never send an offer, never. Also never have your prices on the website if you are in a high ticket environment. You know, only low ticket people uh, like give, give prices. Uh, high ticket has no price. There are deliverables and that there is, there is an investment 
of time and investment of money. But first, the deliverables. And where do they come from? The deliverables, they come from what you have written down so far. You use their exact words, and I will show you a statement of work. You use their exact words, and your statement of work, which I'm also happy to, to go over in the one-on-one -on -one call with you, if you send it to me up front, I will show you how to make it exactly two pages. In B2B, you need it for legal reasons. And it's exactly two pages. The second page is legal stuff. The first page is the three deliverables and the investment. That's it. This is the best statement of work possible and imaginable with the highest conversion. And I've worked with legal teams on this and A-B tested um, a lot. So the deliverables, it's their words. Why don't you send it? Because if you send it, they just skip to the price and that's it. But if you walk them through, you have the chance to see their body language, to double check if, if you are moving along too fast or too slow, so you are in the right cadence. They can ask you their questions and they will have questions. And nowadays they agree. I start sharing the statement of work from here. So I start sharing screen and now they see their statement of work and they see their exact words which I have prepared between the two calls. So now we're getting serious and say, okay, if we work together for the next 90 days, in our case, a sprint is 90 days. So I asked them, okay, if we work together, is this correct? Are, are these the three deliverables that you need? And they see their exact words and they go, oh yeah, that's my exact words. That's exactly what I need. Okay. And um, when do you want to start? Uh, sorry, it's, it's too early to start. And in this moment, if it's a natural conversation, now this will go pretty quickly into the question, all right, but how much time do I need to invest? Because it's a high ticket thing, so it's not done for them. They have to invest time. How much time do I need to invest? And uh, and how much money? Now we have this conversation. And we have the best results with coming with a menu. But we have a question from Stacy. Yeah, I think that, you know, this is so, so, so powerful. I mean, because it's just so different in terms of the approach when you're, you had mentioned, um, when you're selling like a lower ticket product, and then switching that mindset to a higher ticket product and mentioning the price and then not mentioning the price because I'm used to selling expensive things. And my big hang up is then all of a sudden I've got my price exposed because I'm selling like for the most part, what I'm saying is either you want it or you don't, you know, like it's like it's bubblegum products, right? And so it's like, I and I think that that's probably been some of my hang up. So I'm just like refreshed to see that, Johan and Walt have put together like such a kick-ass program that can get me selling expensive things again, because like, you know, being a consultative sale versus bubble gum, because I'm finding that I'm trying to sell bubble gum, like I sold expensive things. And I get so pissed because I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is 97 bucks. You know, like, you're just like, no, you don't, you don't deserve my time. I'm sorry to say that, but like, you don't. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, you should so also much. don't, yeah, you shouldn't. Let, yeah, we we can check your sales strategy is, in a one-on-one -on -one because for a low ticket item, you shouldn't have a call with them. Correct. You so you want sales you strategy must, must fit the offer, right? A low ticket offer, you sell it from a website. Uh, you have an email funnel that sells it. And, and a right. high ticket offer, this is where you take two hours of time and even more because you researched them before. Right, right, right. So thank you. So, thank so you, you so are right. If me. you say, is it this worth my time? Because it's probably not. Yeah. And right. ha happy to check the, the, the offer with you uh, if, if, if you want to take a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, when... 
Tracy's a gun. Where? She's she's ABC. She's always closing. She's awesome. Always closing. <laughs> okay. uh, Trace, I remember. Yes, her. but also yeah. <laughs> All right. When we and you go, Simon. You go. I'm gonna stop interrupting you. Uh, sure. Yes, you thought you'd take a shortcut by plagiarizing my research. You can have a great closing rate with the wrong price and with the wrong offer and with the wrong people. Um, but um, the investment, this is when they ask you, how much of my time do I really need to block? And how much money will I invest per month or total into your program? From there, automatically, uh, now what can we, what happens here if we do it wrong? If we do it wrong, we say a number before we know their budget. We want to know their budget before. How do we get to their budget? And yes, 97 for a very long time is still, is still low ticket even if it's for three lives. Um, and it's fine. It's not one is not better than the other. It's just a different sales strategy for a different offer. High ticket is above $10,000. With inflation, I would say 12,000 now. Uh, traditionally, it's 10,000. And, and so a program that's 12,000, 25,000, 37,000, that's a typical high ticket program or high ticket membership. Uh, now, because now you have these risks, all these risk vectors, and that's why you need a conversation. Otherwise, you don't need it, right? For 800 bucks of a course, my website will sell it and good emails. Because there isn't that much risk if you buy the wrong course. But there is a ton of a risk if you buy a 27,000 program and it doesn't work. Um, so the start comes automatically if, if we do the investing part right. And most recordings that I get, they say a number, and then the other person, you see it in their face, they're shocked. Have you, have you ever had that? And you see it, they go, mm. <laughs> but that doesn't work obviously, and then we get ghosted. How do we explore the budget? Have you ever tried knowing the budget before you say a number? How do you explore that? We ask for a range. Now, what would, what would be a good investment for you in a range from two? Another question that works well is, do you have already budgeted this? And they will tell you, if we did the first two steps right, it's it's safe enough of a space and they will tell you the real budget. So maybe your program is 27,000, but they tell you they have only 19, which happens a lot. Right? They tell you about a number and, and we trust them because it's a safe conversation. It's a real conversation. So they we trust them that they give you the real number. And so, okay, we know they have just 19. Now we have a couple minutes to decide, do we still want to make them an offer? And this is how we came up with the menu pricing. So, and, and it's, it's, it's working really well. So let's say you have a, a, a program that's three months and is $25,000. Uh, ours is three months, 27,000. So, uh, and sometimes they say, uh, well, but I have only 17 you are much more flexible if you bring it to the table like a menu of a restaurant. So there is the main dish and the main dish is maybe, you know, 15 or 18. And then you have some, you can have some starters and you can have some extra wine and you can go wild and have even dessert and champagne. Um, knowing that over the whole year, you will still get the price that you want. You will get your 25,000, but sometimes it will be 18 and sometimes it will be 38. But overall, every single one will have the feeling that they picked the right price for them. 
It's the same principle that we had uh, when we were playing with Leo's doctor. So they have still the feeling they say the number and it's their number. And that's much more important than you hit the exact number per month because over a full year, you will hit your 25. And sometimes when you hear that the budget is 45, like I had this literally, and and somebody said, my budget is 75,000 for this. And I knew that I charged 27. So with that one, of course, I made more margin and I had wiggle room for the next ones to give them uh, just the main course. So over the full year, I made exactly what I needed to make, but I was flexible enough in each conversation to have them drive it. So in, in the one-on-one, -on -one, I can help you create your menu, your main dish and your side dishes so that you get your price but more, most importantly, they always get their price. That's the investment part. If we do that right, it doesn't feel salesy at all. It's just a conversation. And then they will ask, at this point, usually they ask faster than you can ask uh, because it's just domino stones and it's okay. Uh, how to start, when to start. And then you schedule the first call and you have them sign the statement of work right now in this call because it's ready they saw it you did it together now they can sign it that's the statement of work um up, up, up. here's an example uh that's our statement of work i cannot show uh, the statements of clients of course uh but this is ours and you can have that signed with a panda doc with a docu sign we use panda doc is pretty cool um, DocuSign or other software that's out there. You have them sign it, you schedule the first session and off you go. You, your program is done. If you are like me, that uh, now you hand it over to a certified strategy sprints coach, then you start the onboarding. If you are the one who delivers the work, then even easier, right? You're just starting the work. Yes, Daisy. I love that too. Is is like I've worked in sales teams where like literally everybody's like, how do you get all of your paperwork? Well, while you have them still in front of you, you get all of your paperwork signed. You don't let them off the freaking phone. Are you kidding me? You don't let them off the meeting. You've spent all that time. You get the signature. I mean, good lord. And you have no idea. It's like they're racing to get off the call. They're willing to give you the work, stay on the call and get the signature, get that level of commitment. And you have no idea how many people then end up backing out of the deal on step eight. And I know it sounds absurd, but like literally have worked with, you know, I, I am constantly above all of the sales teams as a top producer and whatever it is that I'm selling. So, and that is one of the key places where they constantly, they're great salespeople, but they refuse to stay on long enough to get that signature. And it sounds like so ridiculous. Sorry, but it's Absolutely. frustrating when I see that from good yes. performing, like I'm like listening to their pitch. I'm like, you sound like fire. Like you're great. Like what the hell, what's going on? And I noticed that they just rushed to get off the call. Yes. That's why we need to rehearse. We, for these people, we need to rehearse so that they get into actual closing. They, they finish, you know, one minute, one meter before the finish line. And so we have to practice with them running over the finish line. You sign it here. You sign it right now. And we schedule. If you don't sign it, no problem. We schedule the next call. Right? I love Something that will be fine. You just offered that visual is so powerful because you know what pisses me off more than anything is I, I'm an old I'm I'm an old runner, okay? And like I used to kick ass running, okay? I nobody beat me ever. And so anyway, what drove me crazy was watching people like literally walk across the finish line. Like I always, even though I was way ahead of them, I ran through the finish line. And that is what you have to do. You have to run through the finish line. You don't just sit there and go, oh, well, I'm ahead of everybody else. I'll just go ahead and walk it through. No, yeah. you, the race is not done until you finish. Period. Yes. 
Sorry, but that was just so powerful. That was a good visual. Yes. Thank you. And it's called closing, but it's actually, it's committing, right? It's the beginning of working together. So it should actually be called committing. So if they are vague, you help them with clarity, with calmness and say, okay, so we have a starting date. We talked about the deliverables uh, and you are showing them, right? These are your deliverables. This is the time you invest. This is the money you invest. This is the starting date. Cool. Sign it. And then 16 seconds Obama style silence. <laughs> and this is the part that we have to practice, especially with, with um, uh, less senior salespeople. We have to practice that. That's why every week, every Tuesday, we do we do sales rehearsals and, and we have sales role plays and we play it together because again, that's practicing the fundamentals, right? And we have expert coaches on our team, so we do it with ourselves. Uh, otherwise, we would book somebody to do it with us because this is important investment in, in, in a business. Um, to sum it up, you need a framework. These eight steps are such a framework. If you have a better framework, use that one, but you have to use it. And your team has to use it. And you need expert feedback on that. So make sure that you have expert feedback because just a few weeks on that can change absolutely everything. And this is for senior salespeople as important as junior salespeople because we can get on autopilot and 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 we think we we have it all and then we forget to be sharp enough. So usually I don't do this anymore now that I'm the CEO of the company, but for Johan, uh, this is the link. If you want to grab a time with me, we you can send me the sales record uh, up front. I will watch it. I come with you, refine the questions, make the questions better and create that menu or refine that menu so that you have your main course and your side dishes so that you really feel prepared. I can look over your statement of work and make some, some refinements there. If it's too long, we shorten it. If it's too short, we make sure everything is in there so that you have all the pieces in place. We will not create a script. You just follow these eight steps and you use your current best questions, but they will be in the right order and they will be so powerful that uh, you feel you feel well asking them. Man. But <clears throat> Simon, this has been absolutely epic. Thank you so much. The framework, guys, I'm just going to repeat it just so you guys all know. First thing you do, you visualize it, get draw it so that they can see it while they're talking to you for that one hour. You know, you've mapped out everything. Then extract their frustrations, get the importance of doing it now. The cost of inaction. Is that the COI? Cost of inaction, right? How much is it going to yes. cost? You, know, you had the, the triangle with the money. Yes resources yep and then you agree on the de deliverables so let them choose a la carte what they want then the investment and then the start date when are you going to get started and then the statement of works and then get them going so simon thank you so much for spending your time with us i know it's midnight it's 1 a.m for you now you've come here to help our people understand more get more sales improve their improve their not only are they improving them you're improving their entire um family, their community, et cetera. So really appreciate you sharing. Guys, give it up for Simon. Just give him a give him a thank you in the in the chat. Thank you, Simon. I'm going to put this recording up soon. Guys, book in that call yeah. with Simon. <laughs> Stacy, you're always amazing. I love, love your energy. And for everyone else here, thank you guys. Thank you for being here. And we any last uh, comments before I close up, Mr. Simon? Keep rolling, everyone. <laughs> Keep on rolling. Thank you, guys. Talk bye soon. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.